Welcome to the Schwartz Advisors Report from Aftermarket News. I'm Maddie Weiner, editor of Aftermarket News, and I'm joined today by Brian Cruikshank, partner at Schwartz Advisors. Brian, thanks for taking the time today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And one time Babcock's employee. I was the yes. editor of Aftermarket <laughs> News at one time in my career. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I know uh, you've had many years in the automotive aftermarket. Uh, yeah, this is, we're here at Apex, and this is my... Well, we, we don't count the pandemic, but this is probably, yeah, right. this is, I think, my 27th show or something like that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Brian, as you said, obviously we're here at Apex, and Apex is mostly a light vehicle event, but Schwartz Advisors also engages with the uh, commercial truck aftermarket. Is, is that right? Yeah, so we, we touch just about every sort of business that, that deals with the motor vehicle aftermarket, and mm -hmm. the commercial truck aftermarket is... Um, really important to us. It's an important part of the aftermarket. Right. Um, you know, from, from the investor side, there's lots of interest in the motor vehicle aftermarket, both on the light vehicle side and the commercial truck side. And the reasons that investors would be interested in the commercial truck side um, are, are not the same reasons that they're interested in the light vehicle side. And mm, okay. so examples of why investors might be interested in the commercial truck side of the aftermarket would be things like uh, increasing fleet ton miles. Um, ah, the industry uh -huh. uh, delivered a little better than 11 billion uh, tons of freight last year, and that was up from the year before. And as the economy improves, that will that will in improve as well. Um, things like a, a growing and aging fleet. Uh, all those trucks right. uh, need repairs and maintenance, and uh, the last thing anybody wants is a down truck. Uh, there so is a, uh, a diversity of, of customers. Um, and so for those reasons, uh, investors continue to be really interested in the commercial truck aftermarket, uh, both investors and consolidators. Interesting. So when you say consolidators, you mean like Fleet Pride or? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Th that's, that's probably the best example yeah. of a consolidator in the commercial truck aftermarket. On the light vehicle side, there's lots of them, right? Right. Uh, yeah. We know those, those distributors that continue to to uh, build their, their portfolio and their mm -hmm. footprint. Um, but on the commercial truck side, there are, there are some consolidators uh, that are growing, but I would say that Fleet Pride is probably, not probably, they are the most aggressive in terms of, yeah. of acquisitions. Mm -hmm. um, just in the past year, they've probably acquired 15 distributors. Right. Um, and so uh, they're, like I said, they're, they're being the, the most aggressive. Uh, Truck Pro, maybe to a lesser extent, okay. um, but when, when people talk about consolidators in the aftermarket, Fleet Pride is really the name that everybody talks about. Yeah, for sure. I know we've seen a, a lot of headlines from, from sure. Fleet Pride for sure. recently. So now, you know, to me it makes sense, obviously, you, you know, you guys are in the light vehicle space, uh, in the commercial vehicle space, but are there, are there a lot of similarities between the two? You know, a lot of people say that the commercial truck aftermarket just has bigger parts. <laughs> and there, you and, go. <laughs> um, th th there are similarities um, and, and differences between the two uh, sides of the market beyond just the parts are bigger. Right. Um, if you walk through Apex here, you'll see lots of the suppliers that also serve the commercial truck aftermarket. And mm -hmm. I, I think for that reason, you're seeing more interest on the light vehicle program group side on the commercial truck aftermarket, just right. because of similarity of suppliers. Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that, uh, the differences include uh, different buying groups, uh, different parts categories, uh, different customers, mm -hmm. and certainly the vehicles are significantly different. Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. So how has the pace been from an acquisition standpoint um, in the commercial truck aftermarket? We're seeing the deal flow in the commercial truck aftermarket stay pretty consistent. They're usually okay. between 60 and 70 transactions every year in the heavy-duty market, and um, we don't we don't see that that changing. It's it's staying pretty consistent. Okay, okay, got it. And you know, you mentioned uh, Fleet Pride. Who who are making these acquisitions? Who? Yeah, great question. So acquisitions on the heavy-duty side, um, about half are in the supplier community. Mm, and then okay. the other half are evenly split between uh, distributors like Fleet Pride and others. Right. Uh, and private equity, which mm -hmm. still has a has a, a tremendous interest in this this uh, market as well. Okay. So, Brian, will you be at HDAW? I absolutely will be at HDAW, and I look forward to seeing all my friends and colleagues on the heavy-duty side of the market as I look forward to seeing all my friends on the light vehicle side here at Apex. 
Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Maddie.